We are going to do something different this week and basically run through a bunch of stuff we've learned in the past in order to make a very simple dynamic web page. I'm going to load you up with code right from the start, specifically a bunch of HTML and a bunch of data. Here's the HTML. Nothing crazy happening here, but note that we're adding IDs to the select and the tbody. That's because we're going to be reading the select's value and manipulating the tbody's inner HTML later. Now here's the data, which you should put in between the script and slash script tags. It's huge, so forgive me for cut and pasting here. Oh, and I should mention, if you want to cut and paste here, which I certainly wouldn't blame you, you can find this entire article linked in the description. And yes, those are actually my books. Did you know I write fiction? Well, shameless self-promotion time! You can find all five of my published books on basically every ebook platform, and also in print on Amazon. And you can learn more at cwbwriting.com. Okay, promotion done. Let's get to actually coding. We're going to fill that table with stuff using the array of data, and then change it based on what's selected. To start, we want to wait for the DOM to be ready before we start doing anything. So below the data, add this code. We talked about event listeners in JS Quick Hits 57, but to quickly recap, what we're doing here is saying, hey, once this DOM is ready, run the following function. We're using an arrow function here, which we covered in JS Quick Hits 12 and JS Quick Hits 13. Of course, the arrow function is empty at the moment. Let's fix that. Between the braces, add this code. We covered DOM query selectors in JS Quick Hits 16, and here we're using them to grab the tbody and select elements so that we can use them elsewhere. And by elsewhere, I mean directly below. You'll note that we're calling a fill data function and passing it the tbody value, and in the second event listener, which we're adding to our select, the value currently selected in the select box. You'll also note that the fill data function doesn't actually exist yet, so let's create that. We can do that outside of the DOM content loaded event listener. It's up to you whether you prefer to have the function up top or down below. I like the latter, so that's where I'm putting it. Here's the code. As you can see, this is pretty straightforward. If we're only looking for published books, we do a quick array.filter, which we covered way back in JS Quick Hits 2. Then we use a bunch of template literals, which we covered in JS Quick Hits 7, including one with a ternary operator, which we covered in JS Quick Hits 9, to generate the HTML we want to put in the table. Then we put it in the table. Fancy. If you save all of this and refresh the page, it doesn't work. Let's find out why because I spelled for each incorrectly. This is ye old English way of spelling it. Save that. Kill the console again. Refresh. That's much better. Now you get an ugly but serviceable table full of books, which you can then filter using the select box. Published only. All titles. So there you go. A whole bunch of stuff we talked about in the past used to do something useful. Well, useful, quote unquote. This isn't exactly the killer app that's going to land you 10 million in VC funds, but it's a good way to show how this stuff works together practically to take a simple table, fill it with data, and manipulate it. See you next week.